Hey, bless the Lord, guys. Um, got a couple questions. Are you one of those people that are faithfully attending church? Right? You are there on the Saturday services. You're there on the Sunday morning services. You're there on the Sunday evening services. You're at the Bible studies. You're at the men's meetings, the women's meetings, the youth meetings, the marriage meetings. You are faithful. Not only are you faithful, but are you one of those that are active, right? You are using your gifts and abilities to be a blessing to the body, right? But recently what has happened is that you have noticed some things that are off. You've noticed some things happening that don't seem to line up with God's word. And not only are they not lining up with God's word, but they're actually contradicting God's word. And that has begun to get you in this place where you are a bit concerned. And so you have begun to kind of step back a little bit. And not only are you stepping back, some of you have actually gotten to a point where you've actually begun to stop attending services. Listen, and you have found this video. Um, you are going to be blessed by the information that I'm going to share. In this video series, we're going to be talking about the church that Jesus built. Okay, and it is my goal in this message to share with you some things that uh, can help you through this process. Maybe they will help you be able to take some information, uh, you know, to go and, you know, back to the fellowship, back to the church where you were going and, and present this information to leadership. And maybe they'll change some things up based on the information that you are, have now learned and that you'll share with them. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe you will find yourself uh, having to continue praying and seeking God to lead you to a place uh, where things uh, more line up with God's word or a place where uh, at least they line up with the convictions that you now have. So my goal here in this video is to talk about the church that Jesus built. Okay, you've heard me say this before, that we will never be the church that Jesus built if we do not forsake the church that man has built. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys stay tuned with me on my journey and we are going to dig into this. Uh, with a few seri video series talking about the church that Jesus built. All right, bless the Lord, guys. So here we go. We're going to dig into this. Um, for those who did not see the intro, uh, the reason why I'm doing this message is because I, I felt uh, and have been feeling for years that the Lord uh, wanted me to pastor and he wanted me to start a fellowship and, and that, that f fellowship would have the potential to lead to multiple fellowships. But... Um, I, I ran into a, a roadblock. I, I did not know where to start. I didn't know what to do, and I did not feel led to kind of follow the patterns and structures that I was seeing around me. Um, and so I told you in my, in my intro video that I, my thing was, you know, what I did, what everybody else did, is I Googled it to try to find out, you know, how to build a church, how to start a church. And what they ended up doing was leading me to more confusion because you know how Google is. You can get a bunch of information and you end up more confused than what you were when you started, okay? So ultimately what I did is I began to look at God's word and I began to get God's word as the foundation, right, uh, for this particular journey that I'm on uh, of learning how to do this and, um, and, and, and using that with some research online and, and some word studies and things like that. So we're gonna dig into this. This is the uh, first message to the church that Jesus built and we are today going to start with Matthew chapter 16, okay? Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 reads, Now when Jesus came into the parts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Verse 15. He saith unto them, but who do ye say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto them, unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so the first thing that I wanted to deal with uh, was this word church. Okay, Jesus says, um, uh, Blessed art thou, Simon Peter, um, uh, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I say unto you that you are Simon Peter, and upon this rock I will build my 
church. Now, there's a lot that we can discuss in there. There's a lot of things that, that we can talk about, um, I, but I really wanted to focus on this 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 church, uh, build the church that Jesus built, okay? So he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. Um, this word church has been said um, uh, to come from the word ekklesia, okay? Ekklesia, um, it's the Greek word, okay? And it's been said, the word church has been said to come from that. Um, this word was not coined by Christ, okay? This word was already in use before Jesus used it, okay? This word means summoned, it means uh, it means an assembly, uh, it means a gathering of people, it means a congregation, a meeting, uh, a group of called out people, a group of summoned people, okay? This word was used uh, with, when a, with a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into a public place of council um, with the purpose of studying or deciding on matters. Okay, so this word had a civil use. It was already used with it, it, out of a context outside of, of, of religious things. Okay, and it was just simply used uh, for calling meetings together uh, to decide on weighty matters, okay? But it took on a special meaning when Christ used it. Okay, it took on a special meaning, and he said, Upon this rock I will build my ecclesia. So Christ is letting us know that he is building something, and it's an ecclesia. It is a group of called out people. It is a group of people who have been summoned by him. It is an assembly of people that are going to gather together. Okay, now here's where it gets really powerful at because this isn't just a meeting to decide on civil matters and things like this, but this group of called out people, this group of people who have been summoned by him, right? Uh, uh, this meeting, this congregation of people are people that have been called out from, from Ju Judaism. They've been called out of Rome. They've been called out of sin and darkness. They've been called out of worldliness. They've been called out of idolatry and witchcraft. They've been called out of being in gangs and, and they've been called out of being thugs. They've been called out of this stuff and they have been now placed under the authority of Jesus Christ. They're now being placed in the kingdom of God. Okay, this is this is very powerful. The first thing I want to bring out is the fact that they've been called. They've been summoned. Right? This this ecclesia is not a gathering of just anybody and everybody. You know, yeah, I know that it's a common thing today for our our worship services to be public. And we open the doors to anybody and everybody who wants to come, come all, come all, come all. And but but it, it, this word ecclesia shows us that this was a calling of something different. That this this gathering was a group of people who were now who have made whose I would say it like this: whose hearts have been changed, whose lives have been changed, whose thinking is changed, whose desires are changed, and they are now being summoned. They've been called out. They've been chosen to be under the authority, the kingship, the lordship of Jesus Christ. This is not just to anybody. Uh, anybody come, one come, one all come. This is this is this is uh, people being called, people who are whose whose hearts have been changed and lives have been changed. And we're gathering together to worship our King. We're gathering together to honor our King. We're gathering together to learn how to live as our King wants us to live. People were being called from under the authority of Caesar to come to be under the authority of Christ. Now, this isn't some rebellious thing where people um, uh, were, were taught uh, were taught to um, uh, forsake uh, the, the governmental laws and all this kind of stuff. That's not what we learn because in obeying Christ, we obey the laws of the land as long as those laws of the land don't contradict the laws of the kingdom. Right. If they contradict the laws of the kingdom, if they contradict uh, Jesus's words. Right. We'd much rather be imprisoned. We'd much rather be in death, uh, uh, be put to death than to go against uh, or, 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 be, or contradict our king. This is important. So this word ecclesia means something special. This word ecclesia is a group to reiterate. This word ecclesia is a group of, of people who have been called out of darkness. They've been called out from other religions. They've been called out from idolatry, other beliefs, other practices. They've been called out from ungodly thinking, and they've now been placed under the uh, authority of Jesus Christ to learn his ways, 
right? To teach his ways, to learn his ways, to, to grow in him, to grow in his likeness and learn how to present that to the world, right? This is not a, a public thing where everybody comes, right? That's a different service. I want you to understand that that's a different service. Where everybody comes, that's not a gathering of the ecclesia, right? Where everybody comes, that's an evangelistic gathering. That's a missionary type gathering where, uh, where everybody's allowed to come and then the gospel is presented and then people's lives are changed and then they're brought into the ecclesia to learn his ways, to worship him, to grow so we can go back out and bring people in and back out and bring people in. What we do inside the ecclesia is not for unbelievers. It's not for people who have not been born again. It's not for people who don't want to know his ways and who don't love him and who don't adore him. This group uh, of called out people, their lives have been radically changed because they heard the gospel. They believed the gospel. They were convicted of the truths that they were hearing. They were convicted of the lifestyle that they lived. And now they have been brought into this ecclesia that Jesus built to grow to mature and to go out and do the same for others. Okay, I can go on and on about that, but 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 that's what this is. Jesus wasn't wasn't building a social gathering. Jesus wasn't building a denomination. Jesus wasn't building a building. He was building a group of people that whose lives have been changed, whose attitudes have been changed, whose desires have been changed, and they long to know more about this Messiah who Peter said was the Christ. He was the Messiah. He was the son of the living God. They longed to know more about him and his ways and his plans and his purposes. Amen? So so this is what Jesus is building. Is, is that what you see today? Do you see, when you, when you visit some of the establishments today, the organizations today, do you see uh, uh, something where a group of called out people are gathering who love the Lord, who are who are passionate about their worship, who are passionate about his ways, who are who are seeking after his plans, who 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 desire to, to go out and do and be all that he's called them to be. Are you seeing that today? Right. Uh, um, um, if not, then it is not the ecclesia that Jesus built. If it's just a social gathering, it is not the ecclesia that Jesus has built. If it's just a building where everybody can come and everybody can just be all happy and all calm and, and the word isn't preached and lives aren't changed and anything isn't happening, the gospel isn't going forth, then this is not the ecclesia that Jesus has built. You're in something that man has built. Okay? It, it, so it's important to be able to distinguish between the two. The next thing that I wanted to focus on here uh, is the fact that Jesus said, I will build my ecclesia. Okay? It, this, it's important to know that this belongs to Jesus. And as simple as it seems like that is, we mess it up. We like to say we founded this ecclesia. We like to say uh, uh, we built this ecclesia, right? Not only do we do that, but we go as far as coming up with our own structures, our own way to operate when Jesus has clearly given Rules. He's clearly given structure for how he wanted his ecclesia to work, how he wanted his ecclesia to function, how he wanted his ecclesia to grow. But we have created our own ways of doing things instead of turning to the word of God. I know, I know we say that the word of God is the final authority, but what we say is different from what we do. Because typically we don't turn to the word of God. When we have an issue of so, we wouldn't be having this issue of what, what the church is or how to start a church or how to build a church. We wouldn't be struggling and wrestling with those things. If, if the word of God was the final authority, we would instantly, when the man of God felt like God was calling him to start a church, we would go to the word of God to figure out how to do this. But instead, we turn to our denominations. Well, how did my denomination do it? And how did they say do it? Or how did my pastor do it? Or, 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 or how does the world build a successful business? Maybe if I take business model from the world and, and use it to be the church, I can have a successful church. And so we start getting all kind of business uh, uh, um, business uh, structures, uh, business tactics and business things to business models to, to build the church. But if the word of God was our final authority, we would turn to the word of God to find out how to build his church. The church belongs to him. 
right? And we are to look to him to find out how to start it. We are to look to him to find out how to build it. We are to look to him to see who comes in and who's a part of it and who's not. It's in the word. It's in the word. It's like prego, baby. It's in there. <laughs> I always want to say that. But anyway, um, so this word ecclesia, right? It's it's not a building. It's not a social gathering. It is not a um um. It's 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 not the church. Isn't me? I'm not the church, right? The church is a group of people called out by God with the purpose of worshiping God, with the purpose of growing in God, with the purpose of 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 of, of doing the same, going out and winning others, right? We want to worship God. We want to minister to one another, right? And then we want to reach out to the community. We come together for that purpose, for those purposes, okay? The church or the ecclesia belongs to Christ, okay? The next point that I want to bring out is the scripture says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the ecclesia. This is this is very important because this word is this has been this particular passage has been interpreted to interpreted a couple of ways one is that the gates of hell are uh, the powers of darkness there's satan and his minions his demons that are constantly coming up against the church he's finding ways to infiltrate the church right we see that in scripture he's finding ways to 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 uh, uh, to, to bring men and women of God down. He's finding ways to do all kind of little tricky things to come up against the church. But Jesus has given us a promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church or the ecclesia that Jesus has built. Okay? The other way that this has been interpreted is that it is simply death. Right? The word used there is the gates of hell will not, the gates of Hades or hell will not prevail or the place of death, right? Or death. So the scriptures is telling us that death will not prevail against the ecclesia that Jesus has built. That's important because uh, uh, you can read everywhere, statistics are showing supposedly that churches are closing their doors, pastors are giving up and quitting, you know, um, and, and the numbers of church attendance are down. So the church is dying. It's losing its influence, right? What I wanted to say to you today is that Jesus gave us a promise that the gates of hell or Hades will not prevail against his ecclesia. So no matter how much you see numbers going down, no matter how many doors you see closing, no, how, no matter how many pastors or elders you see giving up or quitting, we have a promise that the gates of hell, whether it be interpreted as demons, satanics, things happening, or whether it be <clears throat> the church dying itself, we have a promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against the ecclesia that Jesus built. So my goal here in this message is to help us to see that Jesus is building an ecclesia. And this ecclesia is special. It's different from any other type of ecclesia. This is a special ecclesia. It's set aside specifically for him. With, uh, and it's operated under his authority. He issues out the commands. He shows how to build it. He shows how it's supposed to grow. He makes the laws and rules. Right? It is his. His name should be all over it. A message about him should be all over it. That's, that's powerful within itself. Because today all we hear is messages about us. About our breakthrough. About our, us receiving our dreams and, and accomplishing our goals and our purposes but it's all about Christ right that's the purpose of the church it is to know him and make him known okay and the third thing is that the gates of hell will not prevail I don't know about you but I want to make sure that I am in the church that Jesus built the ecclesia that Jesus built right that's what the promise is that's where the power is, right? You guys be blessed. Talk to you later.